What's up everyone? Kai Shinokami here with... Kralika Kane! Hi! And we're to talk about the premiere of King Oger. <laughs> what in the heck was that? It was my ending with, uh... Uh... Okay. Sorry so, if I seem hyper. It's been a long day. So, it's... Basically, it's Attack on Titan Sentai style. I thought of Attack on Titan with a little bit of like aliens put into it because when we get to the mech battle, how he has like all that equipment around him, it reminded me of like Ripley when she's in oh, that, and the power loader the power loader i almost like see in my mind the character like get off me you bitch and i know that's not necessarily what happens so this first episode is a first episode yeah there's a lot that goes on uh, it's just way too much visual stimulation for one thing. I say visual stimulation, too many characters introduced because we'll come to find out, which we, I don't really feel like I got this from any of the trailers, that Red wasn't the actual king. So we get introduced to our Red Ranger, his name is Gira. Um, like probably... Ten, eight, ten minutes into the episode? Because I don't think he was... Because we he wasn't introduced right away. No, so... Because we're introduced to the kings of the kingdom. We're introduced to all the kings. So we see we see the red kingdom. I'm just going to call him red color for the moment. So the red kingdom is the... If you, if you want to go attack on Titan realm... The Red Kingdom is the center, like the capital, like basically the capital police. And all we see, the first scene of the Red is basically, I would say, midriff down, like midriff to waist. We just see the chest area of somebody having like a royal suit. Then we go to all the different other kingdoms. We first see yellow who yellow you mean oh yeah yeah we see yellow or, first I, I was having a brain fart there i'm like yellow so we go to the yellow kingdom we see basically a more european style presentation where the queen or princess whatever you want to call her her name is himino ron she basically is very I would say the ex entitled, entitled, the like, exact representation of what you think of a princess. Because she says in one scene, "I can't believe you made me walk here." Then we get introduced to our Black Ranger, who goes by Kaguragi Dibosuki, or, or Dibos Diboski, if we don't pronounce the U. And basically, they're kind of like the outside wall area right there of um because it goes red blue yellow purple black right so we get introduced to him and basically they're like the farmers or the agricultural people then we see and he's got the cocky attitude and then we see purple so purple right. comes next and purple, basically, I think of them... They're the Ice Kingdom. The Ice Kingdom, kind of mysterious, kind of secretive, especially their leader, um, who is just called a lord, I think. Yeah, and you don't even see her face. Or their face, or what have you. And Until we know until for Until sure. we know for sure, I will just go with their face. I'll just go simple. Um, but I do like the design because it's very ninja-esque. It kind of reminds me of, like, something you'd see in Naruto, or even with Roroni Kenshin, where you had any of the ninja characters that would have half of their face covered. 
Then we get to Blue. Blue is supposed to be like the Yankee. Blue asshole. right now is probably my favorite of the ones we've been introduced. Based he, on what little we've seen so far of their personalities, Blue is the one I like the most. Blue is obviously like a normal Blue Ranger when you have the normal stipulations of what a blue is, where they're very distrusting, they're somewhat antagonistic. He kind of reminds me of a uh, Deca Blue. Well, I was going to say Deca Blue or, um, oh shoot. Time Blue. Yes. Where they're basically, or even Joe from Go Kyger. Mm. Cause Joe was kind of antagonistic at times as well like he did his own thing then we see them all arrive and and blues backup character because they all have like a well that's the thing they all have their own servants with them then we have this got this brother and sister so we have this brother and sister Kogani and her little brother who are there to basically be the exposition for us and so they go to the kingdom and they're about to meet the king. That's when we get to see Gira, who is kind of living at this orphanage, helping to care for, helping the caregivers care for a bunch of children. So we he, see him playing a game. He has his face covered, so we don't necessarily know, but he's playing a game with the kids. And He's trying to play the villain. The kids are playing the King Ogers. Kind of like, I got a feel for like Tokuger. Having the kids play that little game when you see them as kids. And then we find this Kingsguard or this representative saying, we need tax to one of the caretakers. And the guy's like, well, I just paid you yesterday. So Gira tries to involve the kids in the game. Basically, they scare the guy away. They tell Gira, the caregivers, that be careful because if you do anything that goes against the kingdom, you're gonna leave the kids without a protector. Then we go back to the kingdom and we see the actual king lounging in his throne. Saying that I'm gonna be the ruler of the king, of the king, king Ogers. Ogers. Blue rejects that and walks away. Because Blue's reasoning is after 2,000 years, I'm the one who helped give you power. So why should I not be king because I did this? And that definitely reminded me of Decker Ranger. Actually reminded me of the scenes I saw of SPD with the Blue Ranger and how he acted. So we then have the four leave because they're a stalemate. Then we get our two villains high on a hill. Kind of reminding me of like what you said with Attack on Titan because well, you see a wall outside. You see a wall and then you just see all these giant creatures and mid-sized creatures coming towards these walls bashing these walls down. Just like what you saw basically in the first couple of episodes of Attack on Titan. And I'm not sure, uh, It's uh, I'm disappointed we don't have another human villain. We don't have another human villain. And so the way it goes, after they start fighting, we see, the, we see three of the four, because Blue does not transform. We see... Purple, yellow, and black transform. And they're fighting off the creatures trying to save the people. And I actually like how gender neutral all of their suits are. Because back in the day, and I know it's been a few years, well, we haven't had skirts for the women, but I actually like how gender neutral so, all the outfits are. Now, what do you think of their outfits, especially kind of having like that hard plastic, like a... Um, I like the capes on them. Well, I like how they have a sigil on their chest I like plates. the suit designs. Um, I just, again, my, my thing is, though, that there's just so much green screen visuals that everything is just, there's so much going on in, like, backgrounds. It's, 
it was kind of distracting. So the only thing I don't like about their outfits, um, and sorry, we don't have like an image to show, but on their outfits for their suits, I don't like how in the um, this area, in their crotch area, so to speak, in the crotch, in the crotch area, it actually looks baggy for all five of them. Now, I do like the fact that they all have a sword that kind of reminds me of like the old school henshin devices for Sentai. Except, oh my god, when Red, when Gira, because Gira breaks, finds out the king is just an asshole. An asshole and is leaving the everyone to die at the hands of the villain so he can conquer the world, um, take down the, all the kingdoms for himself. Red takes the sword. When he gets out, and he's like spending all that time, okay, I gotta hit this button, okay, I gotta hit this button, 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 now I'm transforming. It, it's like, wh what the heck? No, I kind of hope that's not an all the time thing. But still, oh, imagine man. having to remember some sort of Simon Says sequence to transform as you're going through like, do do well, if you think about it, Maji Ranger had the phone yeah, where you had to do a code. Yeah, but the phone, that, that's one thing. But then... Okay. So, we see him transform near the end. And basically, we get our first mech battle of the year. Yeah, well, they didn't waste any time to get to the mecha. And the... Concern I have, well, not concerned. The one thing I noticed about this series, similar to our last two series, is you only need one person in the mech. Well, that that was one thing I was noticing. I was like, um, okay. Well, I liked that we have an actual mech suit again, an actual physical. Suit. Yes, we do. It so it was actual physical people again. But for yeah, both sides, that's the thing. If he can make all the max, all the max combine by himself into the Ojo Ojo Robo or whatever it was called, why would he need the rest of the Rangers there at all anyway? He's got them all, but that he's controlling himself. Well, and that, that was kind of weird. So that bothered me, but at the same time, it made me wonder if. That means they can all fight. Because I'm thinking of like Kira Major. Where Red would fight in the mech at times. And everybody else could still fight outside of the mech. Yeah, well, it's just, it's just weird. Because Kira Major had it. Zenkaiger had it, essentially. And uh, Ryu Soldier And Ryu had Soldier it. Oh yeah, Rhea Soldier did have it where you only needed one person to be the Technically, mech. yeah. Because, so, essentially the last five years. Now, Dawn Brothers... They were the mechs. They were the mechs. But, when you started out for like the first quarter of the series, you just had Taro mm -hmm. be the mech. So it makes me wonder how this is going to work out. Because even if you think about it, Kyojur, he could be the mech as well. Even though you had everybody else, he essentially was running the show. But, yeah, but, they, I'm... The mech looks cool, but if the Red Ranger can already pilot the whole thing himself, why does he even need the other Rangers? Well, and so, Gira basically has this really interesting speech. I actually liked his speech. It's like, fine. If you're going to make me the villain, I am going to go all out and be the tyrant king. And I actually, like, I'm paraphrasing his speech, but I actually liked his viewpoint of that. It's like, fine. If you're going to be the bad guy, but everybody's going to look at me as the villain. Oh, it's like a Robin Hood situation. Well, yeah, it's like, fine, I'm going to be the villain if that's what it takes. Because basically, Ro Rockley's, Rock, it's R-A-C-L-E-S, but it's Rockless. pronounced Rockley's, 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 
um, is how it's pronounced based on how it's presented here. Rockley's. Um, but basically, his plan was to go from one nation to another, picking off the weakest and then leaving Blue for last because be, being that Blue is a technology nation, they would be the strongest. In his, in his opinion, they were the strongest. And so the end of the episode happens where everybody unhensions and the Rockleys is saying, please, you need to capture him because we're going to execute Gira. And so when we see the trailer for the next episode, we're seeing him in Blue's Nation, which either going to warn him, trying to build a relate. We don't know what's happening. I don't necessarily know how I feel about Gira. Because I like the speech, I do, like you said, the whole Robin Hood mentality of taking from the rich, giving to the poor, to protect the poor from the heinousness of the rich. I like that, but I fear, compared to how robust the last three reds were from... Kira Major to Zenkaiger to Dawn Brothers, I am fearful that this red is going to be a very one note character and all of the other characters are going to somehow have to pick up the slack because. Uh, or they'll just be his servants. Or they'll be his servants because, admittedly, from this first episode's perspective... Once you get past the glamour, it felt... Okay, once you get past the glamour of CGI, fantasy, isekai type world, it's... The core is the same Sentai show we have had multiple times over that Don Brothers stepped away from. Well, exactly. Now... I will say the acting for this first episode, blue was good, purple was good, black was, black was okay. I don't remember anything about black beyond. Yellow. She was just that stuck up princess. Bit. She, there wasn't, that's the challenge when you have a stuck up character. And is, after coming off of Haruka, it's like, oh, we're back to this type of Yellow Ranger. Well, because, okay, Neon from Geats has grown on me. Oh. Because of the progression of the story, her character has grown on me. She's become more robust than just that. I'm a poor little rich girl. The challenge is when I have a princess-like character, like what we have for Yellow, Himiko, I think of Go Kaiger. I was gonna say she's like the exact opposite of Milfy, Milfy, Milfina, Milf. Oh, basically pink from Go Kaiger. She was this magnanimous, generous princess. Yes, she was. She had her vanity and she had her vainness, but it wasn't super. She wasn't. Well, that's because she lost her. That's because she lost her kingdom. For yellow, I... For this yellow. I don't know. So far, the archetypes are very... For some of them are one very... One-dimensional. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's the first episode, so there's nothing... It, it could go any way, but based on what was shown here... Again, like I said, once you take out all the CGI... Blah, Basically... You, you have, these... you have a, the same basic Sentai setup we've had for years. The only difference really is it does it, it he said it first, but I was thinking it at the same time while watching. I really feel like Gira is Aaron Yeager uh, because while he didn't turn into a Titan, he had this ability that came out of nowhere. And Aaron Yeager, if you've read the manga or you've just watched the anime, 
basically becomes the villain to protect everyone. Spoilers for anybody who doesn't know the rest of Attack on Titan, but it's just... It's... Why would you say spoilers if you've already spoiled it? Oh, me? shut up. I, I, I always... That always... Weird. Oh, did you know blah, 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 blah? Spoilers, by the way. I... I didn't even think about it until after. But anyways, I am just <laughs> not... I, I want to give it a fair shot. I'm going to put that out there. Because oh, I love Don oh, Brothers so much. And I had such animosity or oh, hesitation God. towards Don Brothers. And it proved me wrong. I'm going to give this a shot. That's notwithstanding. And by the time we get to watch episode two, which will admittedly be two weeks, so we'll probably have three out at that time as well, we'll have Silver Quill here. Possibly. Possibly. And we'll be able to get a little bit more of a expanded perspective. Yeah, we'll rewatch episode one for sure in a couple weeks and re-review it with two and if, if three's out at the time yeah. three. But I don't know. Right now I'm like, eh. I could go either way with it. Um, all I know is right now I'm thinking, okay, this show could be called Common Rider Saber, <laughs> B Fighter Night Force, or hmm. Mystic Knights of Terranog. <laughs> all I'm thinking of is like all the night shells with like night themes. The only thing I will say that I don't or care for... Buds. Well, I was going to say, the only thing I don't care for personally is the bug aspect. I just do find it funny because when Revice came out, was coming out with the dinosaur theme, I'm like, oh, well, since Kamen Rider's already taken Sentai, why not take a Sentai theme? Maybe next Sentai can take a Kamen Rider theme. <laughs> there you go. You got your wish. <laughs> but, yeah, I... We'll see what happens. I'm also curious to see how much they can actually put up with this uh, CGI everything. Well, I I think about Zen... Not Zen Kaiser. I think about Dom Brothers' budget. With just having two rangers, they had to make CGI... And the mechs. And the mechs. But since they didn't have the mechs consistently... You could get away with that a little bit. But they had a hard time CGIing two rangers. I just, I don't know how they're going to be able to CGI the world. They're going to have to do a Kyoger. Is it Kyoger? With Lucky? Q Ranger? Q Ranger. <laughs> where they go to Earth? Where they have to inevitably just go to Earth and Earth it out. Because... No, you mean where they basically have to go to Japan. Well, what have you. They're going to have to get the gravel pit and everything else because they're not going to be able to afford a CGI background. And it's not like you have this huge European area in Japan. Unless they found a unless they found a permanent Renaissance festival to film at. Unless they go to um, New Zealand. New Zealand. <laughs> I was gonna say they could go to New Zealand, but I don't know. Have they filmed a Sentai series in New Zealand? Just the opening scenes to Maji Ranger. Okay, I thought so, but they didn't do any long-standing no. work in New Zealand. Mm -mm. They can't do that. They they don't have the money for that. Well, apparently they have the money for CGI. For one year? Stay in New Zealand for one whole year? But yeah, the, um... Well, yeah, that's true. So... They wouldn't be able to do as much advertising if they did that. I don't know. I'm not sold. I didn't hate it. I didn't, I'm not like, oh my god, I want to stop watching this. But at the same time, I'm like, you know... This is not like Saber. 
No, no, it's nowhere and When near. we first watched the first episode of Saber, I still remember my response of laughing at you and being like, you, st and I still believe you still have to eventually review that series. Hey, you're going to be watching it with me. Oh, right? hell no. Yep. Because at some point we're going to actually sit down and watch it. Won't be this year though. Nope. It probably won't be next year unless Shell Factory ends up releasing it on Blu-ray. In fact, that'll probably be the only way I'll watch it in the next few years. But Until it becomes the only Kamen Rider series I have not seen. <laughs> but overall, eh, not impressed. Me. What's the word they use? Mid. That's what it was. It was very mid. Basically, in the vein of Robin from Young Justice, I'm just whelmed. Not overwhelmed, but not underwhelmed. Just whelmed. Whelmed. I'm whelmed. Whelmed. Yeah, it was a whelming premiere. And if you've never seen Young Justice, shame on you. It was an incredible series. So what did you guys think of the first episode to King Oger? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you were like, yeah, it was a, a, a thing. It was a Sentai premiere where you're like, oh my God, there was so much budget in it. Or you're like, oh my God, there was so much budget in it. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. Click like, subscribe, the bell notification. You can check us out at Kajun Okami on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Patreon. And then the website creativitybydesignllc.com. You can buy cool Kaiju no Kami merchandise at creativitybydesignllc.com slash shop. There's and also a link in the description below. And for awareness, we will not have, unless we do some kind of live stream, we will not have any videos coming out over the weekend. Over Well, Pop Culture Therapy and the Godzilla Review are going to be pr pretty much it until after the convention next week. Correct. Because I've got com parent-teacher conferences, so I'm working until 8 o'clock a couple times this night. And then we're going to... This be, night? This week. This week. And then I'm going to be at... We're going to be at Color Anime Fest. I was say, you're we just We will going be yourself. having, with Silver Quill, five panels. Well, with Silver Quill and with Avent Nebula. Well, we've got enough panels to have a full Sentai team. Yeah. Because we'll be doing Asian and Anime, which will be a pop culture therapy coming out tomorrow on. Or... Yes. Yeah, so it's basically kind of like a sneak peek of... of a little bit more of a serious than the funnier that I'll be doing of the I've panel. got a Kamen Rider Showa era panel where I'll be giving away a copy of Ryuki, which is kind of weird because it's not Showa era, but couldn't get a copy of Black before then. Um, I'll be doing a panel on relationships for otakus. This will just be a fun panel talking about how to look at different relationships, be it romantic, friendship, what have you. Friendship. For introverts, extroverts, basically how to be in a relationship as a nerd. And then a horror anime panel, part two. Part two. I am excited for that one. We're almost finished on compiling that panel. Um, and then Silver Quills is and archetypes. archetypes for... Um, anime archetypes. So basically looking at like the caregiver, the leader, different types of archetypes. And if you're going there. to Anime Fest right now, it looks like one panel will be on Friday, three panels will be Saturday, and one will be Sunday morning. Yep. Uh, anything else we have? Well, I know that we have requested to do a bunch of interviews, so you may see a lot of new content by people that we may have interviewed in the past, or new people, just seeing some fun conversations, maybe rehashing some experiences from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, learning what the hell Genshin Impact is. <sighs> And we know what it is, but yeah, we know what it is. I actually downloaded so I can look, kind of see it. But, but look at Google, look at what yes. they say on Google. Yeah, it's still great. If you type in Genshin Impact, one of the first search options is what the heck is Genshin Impact? So that's my goal to ask. And then, last but not least, my goal is the voice actor for Tatsu 
from The Way of the House Husband is going to be at the convention. So I want to introduce one house husband to my working house husband. That doesn't work right. Oh, I'm going to take it. All right. But anyway, until next time, I think that's all there really yep. is. Bye.